Shalom, brothers and sisters, for those who are here on site as well as those who are online watching. We all love to eat, but not all of us will enjoy or want to cook. Today, I'm going to share with you a recipe that do not need you to go to the kitchen. I'm going to share with you easy recipe for joy. And I call this easy recipe because the ingredients are not many and the steps are simple to follow. But before we go ahead, let us commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for your word, which is our spiritual food. We ask that you will whet our appetite for your word so that, God, we have a desire and we are attentive to what you want to say to us through this message today. We thank you, Lord. We commit this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, first, let us look at the definition of joy. The KJV Bible Dictionary explains joy this way, that joy is that excitement of pleasurable feelings which is caused by success, good fortune, the gratification of desire of some good possessed. And in Greek, pronounced as ka'a, is a feeling of inner gladness, delight or rejoicing. So joy is a feeling or emotion that we can experience. Are you joyful? Are you happy? How do you know you're happy? Well, Reader Digest has some signs of happiness. So let's look at them. And I have um, added some Bible verses that correspond with these signs. The first sign, one, you live your life with integrity. Living a life that's in line with your own values and belief is important for happiness. Psalms 119 says, Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instruction of the Lord. Integrity is when you walk your talk. And when you do that, there's no conflict and there's no stress. And for parents, as well as for myself as a person who teach the children, I believe we want our children to be happy. So if you want your children to be happy, besides giving them things, you actually should all encourage to teach them God's word so that when they know God's instruction, when they obey it, they will be happy. The next sign, you have embraced living in the moment. You are fully awake and aware and concentrate your energies on enjoying the present rather than worrying about the past or the future. Psalms 118.24 says, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be happy today. Each day is a gift from God. And God's desire is that we enjoy this gift. Do not let the pain, regrets, and shame of the past hold us down. And let not the worries of tomorrow rob us of today's joy. So just be like Pooh. Let today be your favorite day. Number three, you express gratitude regularly. Bring it grateful for the things you have and sharing that gratitude will lead to feelings of satisfaction and happiness. Psalms 95 2 says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. Here, it tells us, gratitude precedes joy. It is not joy that makes us grateful. It is gratitude that makes us joyful. So when we are thankful, we are happy. Number four, you enjoy harmonious relationship. Whether it's at work, or at play, being at peace with yourself and the world around is a sure fire way to find happiness. Psalms 1331 says, How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. People who get along 
with others, well, will be happier than those who don't. Number five, you give back. Giving back to others and sharing it is the ultimate way to inspire happiness in your life. Acts 20, 35 says, you are far happier giving than getting, according to the message version. And indeed, we like or happy to get, to receive. But here it says you are even happier when you give because happiness is in the giving. So looking at these signs, are you happy? Do you want to be happier? Well, beginning of this year, I noticed that I wasn't happy. I do not know, I cannot pinpoint what is it that I kind of lost that joy. And it happened for a period of time. So I was just thinking, there's nothing, no crisis in my life. I don't have a financial problem. I don't have health issue. I don't have conflict in relationship. So what is it? So I asked God, and that seeking led me to this recipe of joy. And the first ingredient in this recipe is prayer. Let's read this together for those of you who are here with me. John 16, 24. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. That your joy may be full. This verse is talking about prayer. And when we ask and receive God says there will be fullness of joy. Prayer is about, the essence of prayer is about building relationship. And when we ask, it's not just asking God in a mechanical way, but asking in such a way that we want to communicate with God. That when we ask Him and He grants us and answer us, we will know God in the process. It's just like, let's say you lost a job and you're worried and you ask God and you want to come and tell him what's going on in your life and you tell God about it and you ask God to do something to help you give you another job and when God did that you will be happy when, job, when God give you a job you will be happy and you're happy not just because you got the job but in this process you know God cares for you God take care of you, God loves you, and God is your provider. And this is how, when you ask, you know God more and more, and that brings joy to your life. The knowledge, the joy of knowing God is far, goes a long way, and just merely getting something that you have asked from God more than that. In fact, the Lord has been telling me, maybe since a few years ago, two years ago, if I remember correctly, to come and ask of him, come and spend time with him, ask of him. And I didn't listen to him, not all the time. Instead, I go and ask Google, because some of the things I need to know, Google have all the answer. But when you ask Google, you're not building relationship with Google, and you also don't want to build relationship with Google. So when I ask from God, it is different when God answer me. There is this joy that God hears me. So in the process, there is this closer and more desiring of God in our hearts and that joy that increases as we know this God. And it is not just finding joy by direct pursuit. You know, it's not just doing an activity of which you can, you know, feel happy. Well, sometimes there is such happiness or such fun, you know, in those pursuing those activity. But then this is more like a pleasant or feel-good mental state. What God really wants or what really true joy is, the result of joy, joy is the result of right relationship with God, when we are walking right with God. And we can see that when we first know God, where we make peace with God. Before, we do not know Him. He's our enemy. We resisted Him. But when we come and respond to Him and love Him and know Him, know him accepted Him in our life, we experience joy in our heart. And this is 
a spiritual state, spiritual uh, 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 pleasant and good feeling of a spiritual state when we go through, when we experience God in our life, when we know God, when our relationship with Him is right. And the same way, when we grow in our walk with God, when we submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit, the result is, fruit of the Spirit is, joy, joy is part of it. So joy, when we want joy, we want to make right or we want to walk in submission to God's way. Okay, with this ingredient prayer, what should we do? Persist in prayer. And this verse tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 17, let's read this together. Rejoice always, pray continually. Yes, God wants us to pray not just in crisis or when there's a, 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 a need, but more than that, all the time. Developing that, that consciousness of God and being sensitive to Him and responsive to Him. Being connecting, connecting to God. It's not just a, a, a prayer discipline. More than that, it's always tuned in to God. And this is what God wants us to do. Persist in prayer. That in this relationship, when we hear God, when we sense His presence, that is the assurance, that is the joy that God knows what's going on in our life. And I want to share with you this uh, story of this young, uh, not young, uh, this believer. She is uh, my cousin's daughter. So she called me Biao Yi. And her life, from her life, I see that that is this constant connecting with God. Before she knew Jesus, she already talked to Jesus, asked Jesus for help, and she experienced God. And this is through her brother, who is overseas and always call back and tell them, if you're faced with any problem, you don't call me because I'm too far away, but you call Jesus. And one day when she encountered problems, she actually called on Jesus and Jesus helped her. So after that, Another time, she was in this hall when she first hear the message. It was on a Sunday. And after that message, there was an altar call. And she asked God for a sign. And God gave that sign. And she experienced God and she walked out and made a decision to receive Jesus. And didn't stop there. And then she continued in other aspects of her life. And in March this year, we have a, I have a chat with her through the WhatsApp messages and she gave me a series of what happened to her life, how she has continued to connect with God. And let me just show you the WhatsApp messages. Okay, the first one talks about how she prayed for God to fix the fan because she, now she's based in Singapore and she has moved, in, moved into her flat, her new flat, and she bought this fan online. But during the delivery process, apparently something, some parts broke. And then when it was fixed on to the ceiling, it makes noise when they turn it on. And the noise grows louder if you increase the, the, the level. So they can only maintain it at number one. Then the noise is bearable. Well, of course, they don't want to have this kind of fan, so they pray. And to their surprise and to their delight, God fixed the fan. The next day, the fan was working. And this is not the only one she has encountered. She has encountered similar thing with this fan thing, you know, that worked after she prayed, after she asked God. So she was happy whenever she experienced God's help in this way. So she continued to trust God. And next, she also shared that how God helped her to fix the washing machine. This time, it happened in Malaysia, her parents' home. And they went for a holiday, seven days with six adults in China, came back, there was a lot of laundry. And the washing machine, which already broke down, but didn't have enough time, they didn't have enough time to fix it. Now they need the laundry to be done quickly. Otherwise, there will be a lot of work for them. So they pray. And again, God fixed the washing machine. And they were very happy. And the next is, Related to the washing machine, again she asked God, why? Because of this washing machine that broke down before God fixed it, 
there were big argument in the family. The father was supposed to fix it, didn't manage to do it on time. Now they all blame him. So it was very noisy. There was a lot, no peace. And as a result, that's why her sister was there in Malaysia, called her in Singapore, and that's why they pray. And then the machine was uh, repaired, I mean, was fixed by God. And as a result, the relationship was also fixed. And she was very happy. Of course, after was very happy. This is what God has done. And the way she prayed, it shows that she's very persistent. The next WhatsApp message perhaps will tell you more what and how she persisted in praying for this washing machine. Okay, let's maybe look at this, uh, read her message. Meisya, Meisya is a sister, said because of the washing machine spoiled, why Paul, the grandma and mommy keep complaining about Papa? Very noisy at home, no peace. That's why she called uh, the sister in Singapore. So I asked Meisya to hold on to the car and go to the washing machine. It was raining. Papa holding the umbrella together with JJ and then went out to the washing machine. Then we pray. That is how determined she is. Yes, it may sound ridiculous, but I believe God wants to do, can do it. So go ahead. And her father is a young believer. Her sister is a Christian. And because the washing machine is located at the extended area, not in the main house, that's why it's unsheltered. So they have to go with the umbrella, but yet they are willing to do it. So when she shared this, I realized, oh, wonderful. You really, from the time I know you until now, you are still excited about God. You are still constantly experiencing God because you choose to ask Him, even though it still seems ridiculous. And this is how I believe God wants us to also lean on Him ask of Him so that we will experience Him and there will be joy in our life. Getting the, the answer from God, from getting help from people is different. Huh? The, the joy is different. Okay, the next ingredient. The next ingredient came, I know about it, I know the answer for the next ingredient came in July during Missions Month. And prior to that, I actually realize that I have not been active or not intentional in sharing gospel, whether it's to the adults or even to children in the children Bible class. I used to be like, you know, whenever there's a new children, I make it a point that, you know, I must, take care, I must make sure that I have enough time to share to the children, to the child before the class is over. But I realized that I Recently, I've, been, I've forgotten about, you know, this gospel, this gospel. And I just have to rush through the lesson and make sure that I teach the lesson. Then I realized, eh, why is it like that? But I can't see the connection, the link between joy and sharing the gospel until in July, when during the mission month, Brother Aaron Chang shared this message on lessons from the two sons. And in that message, she read this verse on, uh, in Luke chapter 15, verse 7 that says, There will be more joy in heaven over a sinner who repents than over 99 just people who do not need to repent. And immediately this verse, something struck inside of me. And I exclaimed, I know why I wasn't feeling joyful because I have not been sharing the gospel. And this is where we get the second ingredient. It is gospel. Let's read this verse together. Luke 2.10 But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah the Lord. It's not just joy. The gospel, the good news is great, bring great joy. We remember the song during Christmas, joy to the world. This is the song that we always sing because really the gospel brings great joy and not only to a few people but to mankind, to everyone. And God desires us to share this wonderful good news to people around 
that they too will also have joy. Okay, what is the instruction for this ingredient gospel? Preach the gospel. Second Timothy 4.2 tells us, preach the word. Be prepared to preach, uh, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuild and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Preach the word, proclaim, make known, declare it. The word, the word is God's truth. God's uh, gospel. Who is Jesus Christ? What Jesus Christ has done in our life? What is God telling him about himself? Share this and do it whether it is a, a good time or favorable time or not favorable. In season or out of season refers to all the time, whether you feel like it or not, whether uh, it's convenient or not. God wants us to share the gospel, to make it known. And when I realized that sharing gospel is one of the things that caused me, that can bring joy, I immediately pray. That same day, I pray to the Lord. I say, Lord, thank you for telling me now why I am missing that joy in my life. Now I want to share gospel. And because it was during, I think, RMCO period, so I asked the Lord, it's not convenient to go to people and people also don't want, to, don't want you to visit them. So I asked the Lord, Lord, you open the way for people to come ask me so that I can share with them about God's love. And God answers those prayers. There were six people that was able to share with them and tell them what God has done in my life and who God is. Two of them through WhatsApp messages and another four are actually my cousins from Seremban who called me and said that they are coming over for a visit. I was so happy, wonderful that I can now tell them and share with them about God. I want to share with you one of them which I share through the WhatsApp messages. So you see, actually it's very, you know, it's quite handy. Eh? You can always reach anybody with WhatsApp messages. And this is my ex-colleague in Singapore. She WhatsApp me to inform me that she actually has this big or swell on her neck. And she was very fearful because her GP told her it is not thyroid. So need to go for further check and the special, uh, from the specialist to find out what is it. It can be two possibility. One, it could be cancerous and the other, it could be something benign, maybe just a cyst. So she asked me to pray. So through that opportunity, I managed to encourage her and, and assure her that she's not alone, that I will remember her in prayer because she asked for prayer. So I also give her some Bible verses and also uh, some uh, prayer, how you pray for healing. And beside myself, typing the prayer for her on the WhatsApp message. And then she continued to update me. Then later she found out from after the test, from the, after more testing from the, GP, uh, from the specialist, the result was out. It is actually just a cyst. So she was very comforted. And at first I thought, now that she's, you know, don't have any need, maybe she would not be interested to know about Jesus. But nevertheless, I still share with her. First, I tell her what Jesus has done in my life through the WhatsApp messages. And just tell her that I'm no longer alone to face life challenges and there will be plenty. But I know God is with me and God is able to go through with me and encourage me and strengthen me even in these challenges. And I ask her, do you want to receive Jesus? You can do so by asking Jesus into your life. And basically, it's a sinner's prayer. So I typed the sinner's prayer and then asked her. And she responded by saying, yes, I will pray the sinner. I will pray this prayer too. And I Tell her, do so in a sincere way, not just to, you know, patronize me, not, to, not just to entertain me, but really you want Jesus, not for my sake, but really you desire Jesus. And here I see that really, God, there is no not suitable time for sharing the gospel. It is the Lord's desire that we all will make known what and who He is 
to other people. So persist, continue to preach the gospel. Don't let your feelings deter you. Our part is to share the gospel and conviction is in the hands of God. It's up to the Lord. And the next one is, okay, humility. Humility, Isaiah 29, 19, the next ingredient. The humble also shall increase their joy in the Lord and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Increase in their joy. Those who are humble shall increase in their joy. Another translation says, the humble will have joy after joy in the Lord. And another verse that we are very familiar with, Beatitude. It says here, Matthew 5.5, 5, you can read along with me. Happy are those who are humble, they will receive what God has promised. Happy are those who are humble, they will get God's promise. This picture, I like this picture. When I first saw it, I thought it is like a graphic explanation of this verse. That this child laughing so gleefully as, and, and holding the Bible in his hand as though he has found something that is so precious and he's so excited about it. Let me paraphrase this verse using a child's lingo. It's like saying, ha ha ha, so easy. Don't yaya papaya. This means don't be show off, lah. don't be proud. Huh? Then can get what God says. Joy is the reward of humility. Okay, as a result of being humble, you will have joy. Philippians 2, 3 tells us, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. This does not mean we as individuals have no value, not self-depreciation. Rather, we have not, rather we do not have an inflated value of ourselves over others. We see other people as better than ourselves. And what is the instruction for this ingredient of humility? Pursue humility. That means chase after it. Really want it. It's like how you chase after your girlfriend or maybe even your boyfriend until you become your wife or your spouse. That desire, you really don't give up easily. Pursue humility. And this Bible verse tells us, Ephesians 4, 2 a says, Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Be completely humble in our words, actions, in our speech, in our thoughts, attitude. Be humble. In all aspects, humility, we grow in humility. As we continue to seek the Lord, and learn from him, God desire that we will be humble in the likeness of Christ, who is the ultimate picture of humility. And these steps, okay, for humility can do is recognize and admit your pride. Not all of us are aware that we are proud. There was once I realized that you know I was proud, but I don't even realize it. Then somebody tell me about it because I don't listen to my bosses when I was working in Singapore and Malaysia. Then I realized, yeah, because I think I know better, that I know I'm in the ground and my boss is in the office, maybe they do not know as much as I am. But when people tell me and I start to reflect on it, and when I change, I realize that my relationship with my boss improved. Before that, we are always disagreeing. So I thank God that as a result of realizing that I am proud, and I change, I can grow and I can begin to appreciate people around me. And we can work even better. Okay, the next. Okay, so it's the first step. Uh, the humility, recognizing and admitting your pride is the first step. And it's a big one. And next is serve others, servanthood. Focus on the needs of others than your own. Be concerned and be willing what is other people's need. Not just concerned about wanting people to serve us. 
And the other thing you can do is listen to Brother James' message. The power of humility is a trilogy. There are three messages in them. Why? Because I believe Pastor James or Brother James knows the importance of humility. And he wants us to be happy. So if you feel that you need to know more and the time does not warrant or allows us to continue on, but then you can continue to listen to the messages on YouTube. And good things come in three. That's why you have three messages on humility. And thank God that the church is a place where we can practice humility, where we can serve one another, and not just in the church, but also in where God has placed us, in our workplace or at home. So these are the three things or three ingredients for the recipe of joy. And prayer is prayer, gospel and humility. And these three has a focal point. Each of these have a focal point. For prayer, it is Jesus. And gospel, it is others. You are to share the gospel to other people. And humility is something that you do for yourself. Cultivate the habit or the attitude of humility. And all these three will bring joy to our life. Thank God that he wants us to be happy. And do you want to be happy? Do you want to be joyful? I'm sure all of us desire this. I want it. And let us now bow our head and pray and ask the Lord to come and work in our hearts for those of us who are desiring and wanting and missing this joy in your life. I pray that this message will encourage you. Let's look to the Lord that he will do and let this message sink deeper in our hearts. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are the source of joy, Lord. And you give joy to us, not just in in, in past pieces or little things, but you are in just some joy, but you want to give us full joy, the fullness of joy. So we pray, pray for those who are missing this joy in their lives, Lord, and wanting it, let them not look elsewhere, but look to you, Lord, and let this message speak to them, Lord, so that you will help them and lead them to pursue joy in the right way, from a right relationship with you, and sharing what you have already given to them, that good news of a relationship with Jesus Christ, Lord, that they can share it to other people too, so that other people will also experience the joy of knowing Jesus. And Lord, we pray that we will look to you, Lord, to practice and to put on humility that in serving other people, we receive joy, that joy is the reward of humility. Thank you, Father Lord. So we pray, Father Lord, for you to encourage all of us. And we also want to pray for those who are not well. We ask God, Lord, that you heal them. Lord, whichever part of their body that is not well, let your healing power rest on that part of the body. Make them whole again. Thank you, Father. And Lord, we also pray for your protection, Lord, wherever we are. Keep us from harm, keep us from accident, keep us from sickness, even in the increase of COVID-19 transmission. Lord, we ask for your protection and covering upon each and every one of one of us, not only ourselves, but also our family members. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.